Hi, this is Dallin from a band called I Don't Know How But They Found Me. That's the band name. Can you believe that? Should have rethought that. Anyway, you're watching Rock Sound. Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. We are backstage in Camden. Look who has joined us from tonight's headlines, IDK. How is Dallin Weeks? How are you, sir? Good, James. How are you doing? I'm good, man. It's nice to see you again. Welcome Did you know that game. James is my middle name? Is it actually? Uh, that kind of feels like something I should know at this point, but there we are. Name brothers. Name brothers. Name cousins. <laughs> just hanging out. Yeah, That's yeah, got yeah. good. I like that a lot. Uh, big weekend ahead. Let's start with yeah. that, shall we? Yeah. Return to Reading and Leeds Festival. You must have a lot of memories of this over the years, because IDK last year, you've played on the main stage, of course, before, and now returning to the main stage with IDK. Uh, how you feeling? Favorite uh, memories? I'm a little bit nervous. I'm okay. incredibly excited to do it, though. Yeah. Um, can't wait to get up there and, and get it get it started. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I've been at Reading and Leeds... Uh, for many years over the past uh, seven or eight years, I think. Yeah, God. But uh, yeah, yeah. N last year was uh, really special. It was the first time this new band has been over, and to be back on the main stage this time is really overwhelming in the best way possible. So I can't wait. Yeah, it's exciting, man. Very, very exciting. And of course, Electric Ballroom here in Camden tonight, which is very good. I want to talk really with you about some of these newer songs in the set list because we've talked a lot about the songs that we think might make the album or the singles we've already heard and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. There's a couple of songs we haven't talked about yet that I really want to pick your brain about that you've been playing live that haven't necessarily been released yet. Mm -hmm. So let's start with Lights Go Down. Okay, yeah. talk to me about that. Where did that one come from? Um, that one came from L.A., I guess, uh, as many of them did. I had been living in L.A. for the past uh, eight or nine years right. and only recently got the heck out of there. I, I still like L.A. a lot as a, a place to, to visit. Right. But, uh, <laughs> in, not, in small doses. Exactly. Not right. my kind of town for, uh, you know, being, being there permanently. So. Fair enough, yeah. It, it's, uh, I like it a lot more now that I'm not living there anymore, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should say. Little visitations here exactly, and there. Yeah. Exactly. So that was just in sessions out there? That one kind of came together? What kind of time period was that one? Um, yeah, it was recorded a bit ago with a fella named Jason Hill who's in a band called Louis the Fourteenth, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, he's a really talented guy, does uh, the soundtrack for that show Mindhunter. Wow, cool. Um, yeah, yeah. As well as many other things, but uh, he's a really talented producer and he helped me put that one together. Uh, I can't wait to, to release the recorded version, but in the meantime, we just, we've been really anxious to, to get some, some new stuff no, out on stage, so we've been playing it live just as a way of, I guess, entertaining ourselves, but uh, hopefully other people are entertained as well. Well, it's, it's funny that people do, of course, catch it, you know, it's the modern world we live in, there's, re there's filmed versions out there, people learn yeah. the lyrics, they already yeah. kind of know it, even though it's not necessarily yeah. got the recorded version out there, that's got to feel nice, people yeah, I picking mean, up on it. It definitely does, but I'm still excited for people to hear the, the recorded version, because there are things that you can, can do on stage that uh, don't necessarily end up in the recorded version. Mm. Um, those are kind of two different... Uh, entities sure um is so, the recorded yeah. version done yet or are you just thinking it's when you're it's getting uh it might get remixed one more time okay but um that's not for for sure i mean if it got put out tomorrow the way that it is right now i'd be stoked oh, cool. so that's good to know no it's yeah. nice that things are progressing in that way i want to ask you as well about um that you're obviously still playing a number of brobex tunes in the yeah. set is that something you think you might revisit in terms of re-recording some of those? I mean, I know you did it with back in with Panic back in the day. Is that something you might explore with IDK? You know, there's there's three or four because uh, Brobex was such a, a DIY, zero budget, uh, you know, record in your garage project right. that there's three or four songs that I've always really liked that never got a proper recording or a proper release. So there's there's definitely a couple that I'd like to take a, a proper swing at. Nice. Any and specific a, ones? Um, <laughs> well, there's one called uh, Cluster Hug right. that I've always really loved and uh, recorded that mostly in my bedroom on like an 8-track tape recorder. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's fine for what it is, but uh, it'd be really cool to be able to take that one to a studio and give it a proper recording yeah. and, a, and a proper release too because I think I just threw that online for 
for free somewhere and and it, it's definitely out there but i don't think many people have quite sure heard it yeah yet, take so. the opportunity of now you're recording more with idk to actually give that a yeah. new finished version plus i think no matter how far we get into this thing i think this band will always sort of be haunted by the ghost of the brobex we'll always pr- play a brobex song <laughs> in the nicest there, so. possible yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. yeah 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 absolutely absolutely well that's great um the cover versions as well last time we saw you in the uk of course slam dunk and uh and there's the beck cover in there now and stuff why why that one specifically because it's it's a very interesting choice and it goes down really well with the fans it's uh you know that song is just for me really right, cool. i fell in love with it when i I was like 17 i'm a huge beck fan and that album in particular midnight vultures came out i think when i was 17 or 18 and uh fell in love with that song deborah and i've always always wanted to cover it and every single band that i've been in but oh, right. okay. have never had an opportunity to do it because like i was only i was always the only guy who was like into this song <laughs> listen to midnight vultures yeah. man yeah, exactly. yeah yeah no that's cool so now we got the chance to do it i, ma- I made the tracks at home and, and hired some horn players to do it to, to so that we can do it live now and it's, yeah. it's a whole lot of fun yeah people so. see yeah it's, it's a nice moment in the set every time really kind of Plus, works very, i, I well. hope that it can at if nothing else introduce uh new fans to to that record and to to that artist mm brilliant album yeah. it really is do go and check it out uh social climb video dropped recently that's mm. very exciting and it feels like visually it's building a lot more that is that is certainly the most plush looking i would say it's it's a very different vibe from the sort of intentionally diy looking ones in the past is that the route we're going in visually it's a, it looks a lot more expensive than it actually was <laughs> like it was there's another, an art in that there's an it art was in a, that. yeah well it, i think that when you're operating on a shoestring or no string budget mm. it forces you to be a little bit more creative with what you have yeah and uh so that was another video where the budgets were really really under what we uh, were hoping for. Mm. So um, we found this really great place in Salt Lake City where I live and uh, they they let us use the location for a really great rate. And, yeah. and we had this small window of time to go in, set everything up, get the shots and get out before the sun goes right. up. Right, okay. So cool. it, was a, it was a mad, mad dash to get that thing done. And that's, if you look closely, uh, that's why I look more disheveled as each shot. <laughs> Uh, nice. progresses nice. You know, I think by the end of it like my hair is a mess and I look all sweaty so time like, pressure getting to get you me out of here, so. yeah 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 all cracking but down. I love how it turned out it, oh it yeah. looks super cool man it's nice to see that aesthetic kind of grow in that way uh, and speaking of which around the video I did want to uh, ask you a little bit about this because there was a little bit of confusion as I'm, I'm sure you're well aware around the time uh, Ryan put out a statement of course and all this stuff just about the kind of setup of the band just wanted to see if you could shed a little bit more light on, on, on that whole situation because it seems all resolved and everything well, but yeah it's I mean, a bit confusing. It's I another one of those things that people make uh, more of an issue about than it really is, because you know this this is a, a project I started on my own, you know, writing and recording everything, and I and I brought Ryan into it because I I love Ryan. He's been my friend for over ten years, and he helps me bring this whole idea and this project to life. Sure. And I couldn't do it without him. I wouldn't want to do it without him. So. No, no, that's great to hear. So, yeah. No, no, fantastic to hear. Um, in terms of moving forward as well, I do know that uh, you've said in the past like it would be great to eventually be able to expand the the yeah. kind of the level of musicians you're able to bring, like like have kind of more backing musicians on stage potentially and all that kind of stuff. Is that something you're still looking to explore? Yeah, that's something forward? Ryan and I have talked about since uh, day one. I mean, the way that we started it, it was based on convenience and uh, based on you know keeping expenses low right because sure. we were both still employed by other bands at the same time but um uh we we had always imagined that as we grow and as uh budgets grow mm. uh, the day that we're able to to bring in more musicians yeah. we'd really like to do that because uh improvising ideas and and creating you know moments in songs that can extend or shorten sure uh, that's something that we both really like to do and that can be difficult when you're using backing tracks but we try to find those moments no absolutely but with uh, real musicians it would be a lot easier to do well maybe so. maybe at some point in the future it'd be great to see yeah. uh rest of the year what we got planned because i know you've got some big gigs with uh it seemed like 1975 and the killers and stuff yeah. all these kind of big radio shows yeah. out at christmas um anything else kind of uh, lined up more recording i would presume at this point um yeah we're zeroing in on recording dates finally for this record great. so I'm, I'm excited about yeah that but uh yeah these shows that you mentioned are going to be incredible because i'm a huge fan of both of those bands yeah. and uh there's one show that we're doing, in, I think, in Florida in particular. It's got like five or six 
acts on it that I'm a huge fan of. So that's, that's going to be a fun day. Yeah, that's yeah. exciting. Exciting moving forward with the year. And uh, in terms of the album, I know I quiz you every time, but any more of a time frame you're thinking on this? Like what, what stage are we at <laughs> at this precise moment? Well, the Where time frame that I'm thinking of is like six months ago. <laughs> you know? Yeah, fair play. I mean, that's, so, hey, that's the way it works sometimes, but, you I suppose. Know, we have a team and they've got a plan and, and we trust uh, you know, oh, yeah, they're, it's they're, exciting. what they're doing. And so uh, it's, it's a matter of hurry up and wait and, and being patient but uh you know luckily i've i've got some experience in that department so <laughs> fair enough but it, it's gonna happen and and i'd rather do it right than do it quickly of I course guess, so. uh final slightly cheeky question i suppose we've talked about some of the songs you played live of course that we already know about that haven't been recorded yet is there any titles or any hints you can give me of something that the fans haven't heard yet that we should all be looking out for well I've, I've, there's one that i've mentioned before that is my favorite song that uh we've recorded so far uh no one's heard it yet but it's called from the gallows and uh to give a little bit of a, a hint i guess it's really based on uh the ink spots which is an old 1930s and 40s uh, jazz quartet. They did a lot of like barbershop harmonies. And oh, you've mentioned them before. They, as they had a real like yeah. formula that they would use when they wrote songs. So it's kind of my attempt at, at using that formula and, and, and writing an Ink Spot song. So I'm, I'm really uh, happy with how, it, how it's turned out. So I can't wait for people to hear it. I'm still not sure how we're going to do it live, but <laughs> we'll figure it we'll out. Wait and see. Yeah. There we go. Something to look forward to. Uh, in the meantime, have a great show tonight. Have a great festival weekend. Thanks, we'll see James. you again soon. All right. Appreciate it. Always good to see you. All right. All right. Down the mix, everybody. <laughs>